All right, Shalom. There's a brother in the hall here from the gym at Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yahshua Allah, and the sincere salutation to all Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word, and all truth and in sincerity. All right, this is Philippians chapter 1, and I'll start at verse 15. In the NLT, it reads, it's true that some are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry, but others preach about Hamashiach with pure motives. They preach because they love me, for they know I have been appointed to defend the good news. Those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Hamashiach. They preach with selfish ambition, not sincerely, intending to make my chains more painful to me. All right, now I want to bring this out because there's no new thing under the sun. You know, and what we're witnessing through the spirit is everyone coming back into their respective lots. You know, you have a lot of those of these Israelites uh, who are basically using sensationalism to make a living off of the truth. You know, and it's not for pure motives. It's out of strife. It's out of rivalry. It's out of selfish ambition. All right. And it's being made plain. All right. You know, when we deal with guys like uh, Hassad is a perfect example, uh, the, the Johnny come lately, if you will. You know, he's parted with Sakari and now this is his effort to build up his own brand. You know, it's really social media 101, you know, create attention and then monetize it. And this is how we know that these guys are not operating out of pure motives. But, you know, we have to suffer these things through the spirit and poverty, Al Bashim Al Shad, you know, for prophecy's sake. But now we're entering into a time, right? This is Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. It says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. See, this portion of preaching the gospel and the, the videos going out, this was a process to uh, awaken and strengthen the faith of the elect. But eventually, you know, as the scriptures say, we move from faith to faith. And eventually we're coming into a time where the Lord is about to play these things out. And that's why you see slowly but surely uh, things are shifting. You know, we're now getting into a point where the debate and uh, trying to prove a point is is coming to an end. You know, we preach the gospel through the spirit. We defend the gospel. But we're getting close to the time where the Lord is going to perform these uh, these prophecies and judgments at an all time high. You know, so you see a shift in the spirit. You know, if you're watching with a spiritual eye. You know, what these guys are doing is nothing new, you know, because when you look at Paul's situation, he was going through something similar. All right, this is Romans 1 and 17. It says, for therein is the righteousness of Yahweh Bashim Shai revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. All right, so things are shifting. You know, uh, the scriptures talk about the famine of the word. You know, it also talks about the foolish virgins. All right. Who, who didn't keep oil in their lamps. And then they, you know, they came to the one, the wise virgins and said, let me have some of your oil. You know, this is a perfect example of that playing out. All right. In real time. If you have spiritual eyes to see it, you know, a lot of people, you know, they really watch the videos for entertainment. You know, if we being honest, a lot of people love the rivalry. They love, you know, taking that WWE spirit into the truth. So they relish in these type of uh engagements these type of confrontations but in reality this gospel was preached to warn and strengthen you to really strengthen the elect you know all of these things were done for the elect's sake and then once the elect are sealed then the destruction is going to come you know this information wasn't meant for us to um look deep you know it was meant to build up the elect through the spirit and poverty of Bashim al Shah for the next level all right now i want to go back to this all right. So going back to Philippians one. And I'm going to read this again in verse 15, it says it's true that some are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry, but others preach about Hamashiach with pure motives. They preach because they love me, for they know I have been appointed to defend the good news. Those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Hamashiach. They preach with selfish ambition, not sincerely intending to make my chains more painful to me. And, you know, you're dealing with our apostles and elders who have been preaching this gospel for decades, you know, dealing with guys like this for decades. 
you know, and they add to the the strife, you know, they add to the burden, so to speak, for their own selfish ambition. It's not out of sincerity, you know, it's out of this disguise of sincerity and humility. But when you look at the actions, it's really out of self ambition, selfish ambition, as the scriptures say, out of vain glory. You know, and that's what you see with with this guy in particular. You know, when you deal with the Sakari as a as a camp, you know, everything is monetized. You know, and that's a social media 101 method is to gather attention and monetize it. You know, so this dramatic fashion of going to to a camp, but not actually going on the highways and hedges and teaching yourself is making it plain. You know what his intentions and his motives are through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemuel Shah, lest he repent. All right. Now, I want to do this real quick. I want to go to the commentary on Philippians one, because, again, there's no new thing under the sun. All right. So I'm going to get to the point. You know, and call her Lord Miao Bashi Miao Shah, you know, even with these type of situations, because it's necessary. Um, everything has to has to be fulfilled. Everyone has to come back in their lot. All of these things have to happen through the spirit. And that's a part of the the sealing of the elect, if you will. You know, a lot of, of people are going to see through this this uh, this situation that this guy is doing. They're going to see through it. Those who are spiritual are going to be able to identify what's actually going on around them. Because you had guys like that who were preaching purely out of selfish ambition. They weren't the man in the world. You know, they got a little bit of attention in the truth and they're riding that wave. As in the days of old, it's happening again. All right. So let's get down to this commentary. I'm going to just read around. Let me see. Yeah. All right. So let's start here at 15. All right. So it says Philippians 1, 15 through 18. And this is the David Guzik uh, commentary it said Paul considers the motives of others in their preaching. All right. It says some indeed preach Hamashiach even from envy and strife. It said Paul knew that some preached because they wanted to surpass Paul in ministry and to promote their own name and place above Paul's. And it's obvious this is going on. You know, it's frustrating, but at the same time, Paul was dealing with it, you know, the Apostle Paul, Salakia, and many men before, you know, so it's a light thing to have to deal with it again through the spirit. Lord willing, we'd be a part of that number, but everybody's coming back, you know, so continuing, it says these people were glad Paul was in prison because they felt this gave them a competitive edge over him and what they considered to be the contest of preaching the gospel. And you see that same spirit happening now. You know, Jake looking at this like it's a Fortune 500 company, like it's a game. Not realizing that the gospel was meant to be preached to seal the elect. You know, the main thing has stopped being the main thing for a lot of those guys a long time ago. And it's being made plain. But at the same time, through the spirit, you know, those who made sport of the prophets are also identifying themselves as Israelites. That's going to happen, too. When you deal with the ancient world, the guys who were beating uh, Jeremiah knew that they were Israelites. So everything is happening again if you can see it from a spiritual perspective. All right. Now, I want to continue on this. It says these people were glad Paul was in prison because they felt this gave them a competitive edge over him in what they considered to be the contest of preaching the gospel. They were motivated, at least in part, by a competitive spirit, which too often is common among preachers. It says Paul wasn't so critical or cynical to believe that every other preacher had bad motives. He knew that some also preach from goodwill. And you see our apostles and elders, they say it all the time. You're going to have some of the elect amongst those camps, but they're going to repent and come out of it. You know, and some Jakes are sincerely lost. They think that they have the truth and they are sincerely lost. That is a part of this uh, this this journey, if you will, as well. But then you also have those who are preaching for strife, for selfish ambition, for, own, for their own personal motives. And that's being made plain. All right. Now, continuing, it says the former preach Hamashiach for selfish ambition it says those preaching the gospel out of wrong motives are infected with selfish ambition, which make them serve, but not sincerely. Ambition isn't necessarily bad. There is nothing wrong in wanting to be the best we can be for Yahweh Shemuel Shai. But selfish ambition is most concerned about a successful image instead of striving for true success 
before Yahweh Bashima was shot. All right, and it's a weak mentality. You know, to try to boost your ego using the scriptures is a very weak mentality. All right, and that's why, you know, uh, these things have to happen. All right, heresies have to happen. All of these things have to happen in this day and age so that those who are spiritual can discern the difference between the two. You know, and that's why you marvel not. You know, of course, it's frustrating it to a certain degree, but at the same time, through the spirit, according to prophecy, these things are going to play out. You know, Paul was dealing with this and, you know, brothers are going to have to deal with it. You know, apostles have been dealing with this for decades. You know, this isn't the first guy. This is the Johnny come lately. This is not the, the pioneer of, of this, of the scoffers, you know. And there's going to be more to come. You know, and what you find is these guys try to find these little points to to make and then you lose sight, complete sight over the main thing. All right. It's another form of distraction when you really look at it. All right. It says supposing to add affliction to my chains, it says those who preach Hamashiach from the wrong motive, supposed to add affliction to Paul's chains. Their competitive hearts didn't only want to win for themselves. They also wanted Paul to lose. <laughs> All right. It says they wanted Paul to admit the humiliation of having to admit that others were more effective in ministry than he was. They didn't understand that Paul honestly didn't care about this because he did not have a competitive spirit in ministry because it ain't about us. And Paul knew that, you know, they were set forth as an example. You know, you had these guys make that statement a while back. Are you just mad that the other ministries are more successful? It ain't about that, man. It's about the elect being sealed and us getting the hell out of here. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. That's the main thing. That's why when you deal with our apostles and elders, the channels aren't monetized. We're not trying to sell people garments. You know, we're not out there trying to promote some kind of bodies, oils, and, you know, thank you for the super chat. Like, we're not, you know, the, the it's set up. Out of pure sincerity, man. You know, you have people that give alms or whatever the case may be, but we're not trying to promote some kind of business. You know, we preach the ministry through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shema Shah, beginning with our apostles and elders and bishops, of course. You know, out of sincerity, because we truly believe through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shema Shah that the Lord is coming back and we want to be pardoned for our iniquities. We want to be pardoned for our, our transgressions. But you have those who are preaching out of pure competition, out of pure envy, out of pure ego, and it's being made known. And all of these things have to happen. All right. All all everybody's coming back. Let's go here. This is Daniel chapter 12. And I'm going to jump down to verse 13. All right. And it reads, but go thou thy way to the end be. For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. All right. Now, it's always possible for, for guys to repent, you know, but again, through the spirit, just like Daniel had to stand in his lot, everybody else is coming back to stand in their lots as well. All right. And this is why we understand that this is a part of it. All right. I want to get this in uh, Corinthians. All right. This is First Corinthians 11 and verse 19 it says for there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you so it's no marvel that these doctrines are getting worse you know that evil men are waxing worse that these doctrines are already off but now mutating you know it's not a it's not a a, a shocking thing because again this is a part of prophecy you know the the building of the tabernacle of David, even in the ancient world, was not a, a pretty business. It was highly controversial. So it makes sense that it would be like that in these last days. All right. So uh, Lord willing, this was edifying. I just want to put my spiritual two cents in through the spirit and poverty out by Shemel Shai. You know, nevertheless, you know, as the scriptures say, let's get that. This is Romans chapter eight and twenty eight. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love you, Yahweh Shema Shai, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So those who are sincerely seeking Yahweh Shema Shai, all of this is a part of them being sealed and strengthened, the elect. 
All right, so Lord willing, this was edifying with that. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rokakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aquath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.